Hello everyone, it's Ty from TCG Block here um, with the recent announcement of the Vampire Support cards, um, or yes, card, the main extra deck boss monster. I decided to bring my Vampire themed deck out of retirement and run it for a few matches. And it's just as fun as I remember. I do love this archetype. It needed some help. It was, you know, it's an, an old archetype that has been sort of split up over the years, but I'm definitely excited for it to get some support and get some love. And, you know, hopefully uh, this can give us a true boss for the deck. Um, as with all of our deck profile videos, um, you're not going to see many out of, you're not going to see any out of, th out of theme hand traps. You're not going to see out of, any out of theme extra deck monsters and anything within this deck will stay within the theme of the vampire vampire archetype um it'll be again in similar theme to the Rika and spirit charm and all our other deck profile videos um so without further ado i will go through the deck profile and give you a quick rundown on what each card does so i start with a singular of vampire viavode the most recent uh, vampire boss monster on normal summons, special summons two from your opponent's graveyard to then go into your vampire extra deck. It's pretty good. Um, it's it's not incredible. It's an extender. It's not an absolute boss. It's a good extender, and you really want to normal summon him whenever you can. Um, I then run one Scarlet Scourge and one Vampire Vamp. So these are my high level vampires I run, high level main deck vampires. Um, Scarlet Scourge being another extender, special summoning from the graveyard, and Vampire Vamp being a somewhat of a main deck boss monster. They're my sort of, I kind of want to see them, kind of don't want to see them. I have mixed feelings about main deck boss monsters. Um, for some, I guess, vampire hand traps, I'll run two Vampire Frowlin. Um, when a monster declares an attack, you special summon Frowlin from a hand, and she can manipulate attack values using life points. Um, an incredible card if like if anyone plays vampires you're running typically two frowns i've seen sometimes three but three can be a bit bricky so i run two one secret one ultra rare <laughs> this this deck is a bit mi mismatched with my rarities as well which you'll see later on um it is what it is i run for my sort of combo extenders and combo starters i run two vampire sorcerer um, you sort of just only have him for his graveyard effect. We've got um, a foolish and an archetype foolish and a couple ways to send to the graveyard. So is I use his banish effect. I run three Samurai Skull. I think Samurai Skull is an absolute must-have three of this deck. It's essentially normal summon to foolish. And your whole deck revolves around getting stuff in the graveyard and, and doing a lot of minute places with that. I run, speaking of cards in the graveyard, I run three of Vampire Familiar. Um, for those who don't know, this and the next card are absolutely crucial to the Vampire Archetype. Um, when it's special summon, you can pay 500 life points to search a Vampire Monster. Um, and I'll just get into the next card, Vampire Retainer. A similar thing, when it's special summon, pay 500 life points to search a Vampire Spell or Trap. So you've got a search for a Spell or Trap and a monster. It's on just on a special summon, not through its own effect, because it has its own special summon effect, but just through any any special summons at all, we pay five life points to get a search, which is incredible. Um, they also have, they both have the same graveyard floating, well, graveyard effect, is that uh, you can discard a vampire card to special summon it from the graveyard. So searches and it can special summon itself from the graveyard. Easily, like I want to start, if, ideally I'd start this and one of these, right? You normal summon this, whatever one you didn't get, send to the pitch to the graveyard, then you use the effect special summon by discarding the other one, right? You essentially get all three on the field. Absolutely incredible. Um, for I run also one a Gozuki. If anyone knows Gozuki and Mezuki, I was originally running Mezuki as well, but I found that I didn't really need it. This this deck is very monster heavy as it is, so I try to keep it low. Um, and then I just run a singular in theme Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion. Um, I just think it's kind of fun. <laughs> I don't typically get to run too many hand traps, and when I get one within theme, it is absolutely great. But the absolute cards you want to see in your hand turn one is a Samurai Skull and either a Familiar or a Retainer. If I can get Samurai Skull and one of these, I get into a good, good spot. I can combo a little bit. That is all the monsters. I'm running around 19 to 20 if my memory serves. So yeah, very monster heavy. 
um, but I feel like this deck you sort of need to, especially when you're running some main deck bosses. I'll move to these spells and traps. I'm running two Vampire's Domain. Um, I, I'll just give a quick rundown for those who don't know. Uh, once per turn, you can pay 500 life points to get an additional normal summon of a Vampire. Um, and uh, anytime you deal battle damage to your opponent, you essentially get life still. You get their life points back. And this helps because for a bunch of this deck, we, we use life points to manipulate things. Um, I run two because it can be searched, and I find three can be bricky because it's a hard one for a turn. I'm running one Vampire's Desire, um, uh, two effects, one of them being a Foolish, um, and one of them being um, a, a Swap, one in Field, one in Graveyard. They're the only two Vampire-specific spell cards I run. Um, I thought about running this at more, but... Uh, mixed results. So um, this is one of the few I play around with the ratios of, but for now they're the only pure vampire spells I run. For other in our in themed ones, I run two Book of Life. Um, I run one called the Mummy. I run. I'm currently running three Zombie World um, for the Link Monster, which I'll get into. But I'm gonna play around with this ratio, um, and I run a Foolish Burial. So. Uh, everything sort of makes sense with how the how the deck runs. Um, I've got a few more spells to get into. I actually run a lot of spells in this deck. I run a one for one because familiar is a level one. You want to get that into the graveyard as soon as possible. I run a pot of avarice because we do send a lot to the graveyard and we do have draw issues. Like there's no, like we have a bit of searching with the deck, but we can't draw too much with the deck. Um, an upstart because it's I think it's the best card in the game. Monster reborn because you never have enough. Twin twisters for a bit of back row. Mind control, and then finally, <laughs> probably the one another card I'd change should be double summon. Um, we've already got a uh, vampire's domain, but I run out of double summon just because it's like certain vampire cards only get effects when you normal summon them, so uh, yeah. But it's 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 one I'd be willing to change, and that's all the spells. Move on to the traps. Uh, very low trap count. We run two Vampire's Awakening, which is essentially a trap card to special summon for the deck, but destroy it during the empty days. Very simple, very good. Special summons for the turn if you need a wall, and then gets into the graveyard, which is absolutely incredible. Then we run three Vampire's Aw Vampire Domain, which is an Omni Negate, as long as I control a vampire. Um, Omni Negates are incredible in Yu-Gi-Oh. In fact, again, in Archetype 1 that I can search. This is 100% searchable. Um, so, and typically I'm either, because I'm running five uh, cards, five spells or traps I want to search with um, Vampire Domain, I'm typically going to open one of those so I can search the other one. Um, but that's all the main deck. That's a clean 40 for the Vampire main deck. Um, I'll move on to the extra deck. We keep it short and sweet. We've got one of the Link Monster, um, a great extender for the deck. Uh, it's just a link to, um, you can do each of these effects once per turn, special summon from your opponent's graveyard to your opponent's side of the field and becomes a zombie. And if a zombie is special summoned from either graveyard, draw a card. So you essentially special summon to your opponent's side of the field, draw a card, um, and some of the, um, what is it, vampire cards can use monsters your opponent controls if they're zombies or use monsters originally your opponents. So we can mess around with that. Another reason why I have the mind control. I run a vampire, Crimson Knight Vampire Brahm, and it's it's an all right Xyz card if we didn't have Sheridan. Sheridan's the current uh, extra deck boss for the archetype, but I'm definitely excited to get that new Xyz card in. It will definitely take over Sheridan, but Sheridan, um, he's a level six, but you can use cards your opponent originally controlled, and they can be counted as level six. So by using Viavide, normal summoning him, Taken two from your opponent's graveyard, and those two become Sheridan. Oops, my apologies. Um, it's the current best boss, but again, he will be bumped to the back when the new one comes in. So that about wraps up Vampires. Again, it isn't the strongest deck in the world, but it's a fun deck and it's a unique deck. I don't find many people running Vampires, which is fair enough, but definitely a deck I have an attachment to because I've been running them for a long, long time. Um, yeah, that about wraps it up, guys. If you've made it this far, thank you very much. Check out some of our deck profile videos, or if you like hearing us talk, check us out over in the Lowbot podcast. We do a basketball podcast every week. Okay, thank you very much. Bye.